Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on the multiplayer beta of Halo Infinite. At least they're calling it a beta, even though it's really not much of a beta. It's just that they released the multiplayer component first and made it free to play, and presumably it goes out of beta when the campaign launches on December 8th. But whatever, it's not that important at the moment. Before I go any further, I do want to mention that you've probably noticed by now my voice sounds a bit weird, and that is because I'm still recovering from a sinus infection that basically put me out of commission last week. And while I'm mostly functional at this point, at least functional enough to be able to do videos, it's still gonna sound a bit weird until the sinus infection fully clears up, so I appreciate your patience on that. Anyway, back to the main topic of the video. The Halo Infinite Multiplayer Beta which has been getting a bit of a mixed response from its fan base. Now, I'm not part of that fan base. I've never really cared all that much for the Halo series, and certainly not the general gameplay style of Halo, but it has its moments here and there, and I've certainly enjoyed Halo Reach and the gameplay, at least, of Halo 4 well enough. So I figured, what the hell, the multiplayer beta and just the multiplayer in general of Halo Infinite is free to play, so I might as well give it a try. First thing to talk about is the performance. Now keep in mind, I'm running an i7 4790K, 16 gigs of RAM, and a GTX 1080. It's certainly not a super high-end system anymore, but it can definitely still hold its own. And while there's still probably a few things that the development team behind Halo Infinite can optimize, for the most part, it actually runs pretty well. I'm running this thing at 1080p on the high settings, and it usually gets well over 60 frames per second, usually being somewhere in the 70 to 85 range, with very occasional dips down into the high 50s. Obviously, a lot of that depends on what map you're playing, how many players are on that map, and how much chaos is going on at any given moment, so the mileage is going to vary there. But I feel pretty confident in saying that if you are a bit more concerned, say you have mid-range or lower-end hardware, you may as well still give it a try and just start lowering the settings and find a point where it actually works well for you because it's probably going to run pretty well on your system as well. I mean, keep in mind, this thing is still running on the original Xbox One as well. That's going to be a pretty wide range of hardware that can run this thing at a decent frame rate, so they've done a pretty good job with that, it seems. Next thing I want to talk about is the general gameplay experience of Halo Infinite, because there's actually not as much to talk about there. It's more or less an iteration on what we saw with Halo Reach 4 and more or less 5, although admittedly I didn't get to play much of 5 other than Halo 5 Forge, because it's still Xbox One exclusive. Still no idea why they haven't run the PC, but whatever. Infinite is just more or less a refinement of things that came before. The general gameplay style of Halo is still very much intact. You still have two weapon slots where you can swap weapons in and out of. You still have the health and shielding mechanics where you will take damage to your shields until eventually the shields deplete, after which you are vulnerable to being dropped very quickly from sufficient leg, arm, body shots, etc. from most of the weapons, but also from a single headshot from a weapon capable of doing headshots, or of course a single melee attack. And of course, some of the power weapons like the energy sword, the gravity hammer, the rocket launcher, or a headshot from the sniper rifle are all still one-hit kills. The sprinting mechanic from Halo 4 and 5 returns, and you also have equipment where you can pick up a drop shield or a grapple shot, which is just a grappling hook, or something along those lines to use as utility equipment. And of course, on some of the maps, vehicles are still available, and they control and function more or less like they did in all the other games in the series. It all very much looks and plays like a Halo game, so if you like the Halo gameplay style, then you will almost certainly like the gameplay in Halo Infinite. But if you didn't like the Halo gameplay style to begin with, then Halo Infinite's probably not going to win you over. It is very much a refinement of things that came before, and not really anything all that new. Don't get me wrong, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that per se. Incremental improvements or refinements are generally what sequels do, especially in long-running major franchises, and that's exactly what they've done here, but it's not really anything that us non-Halo fans are going to be all that 
that enthused by. To give you some context if you're not familiar with my history with the Halo series, I didn't have an original Xbox back in the day, and I really didn't play very many console first-person shooters back in the day, precisely because I really, really hate playing first-person shooters on gamepads. Hell, I don't even like playing third-person shooters on a gamepad, but at least those don't have these sickeningly low FOVs that first-person shooters on console generally do, and Halo was no exception in that regard. And by the time I did finally get to play the original Halo, it was the PC version, and I didn't really see the hype behind it. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't particularly good either. As the years went on, eventually I managed to get an Xbox 360, and that's when I finally did get a chance to play all the other games in the Halo series up to that point, which was from Halo 2 on up through Halo 4, and the only one of those that I could actually say was an overall good game was Halo Reach. 4 has decent gameplay, but the story is absolutely terrible, and as for 2 and 3, well, let's just say that the fanboys were not happy when I reviewed those. Fast forward a bit and you eventually get to Halo 5, which I did not play other than Halo 5 Forge, which was the only thing they made available on PC for some baffling reason, and I barely got a chance to mess around with any of that because the community for it was so minuscule that you couldn't find games. Eventually, they brought the Master Chief Collection to PC, and I did pick that up. I've messed around a bit with primarily Halo Reach and also Halo 4's multiplayer, and while I thought the experience would be a hell of a lot better on mouse and keyboard than on a gamepad, it turns out that they gave gamepads so much aim assist that if you play with keyboard and mouse, you're technically at a disadvantage. It is really weird. And I was worried that Infinite was going to have a similar problem, but thankfully it doesn't seem to. As far as I can tell, I was playing with people who were using both keyboard and mouse and gamepads, and I didn't really notice any major standout problems. Obviously, the gamepads do have some form of aim assist. The game would be basically unplayable without it, but it doesn't seem like it's been so strong that it gives them an advantage over keyboard and mouse players like it does in the Master Chief Collection, so at least there's that. But as for the general gameplay experience of Halo Infinite's multiplayer, I mean, it's, it's Halo multiplayer. If you like that, you'll like it. If you don't like Halo multiplayer, you won't like this. And I don't really care one way or another. It has its moments every so often, but I've been seeing a lot of people acting like the gameplay experience is absolutely amazing, and honestly, I just really can't see it. What I can see, however, is the sheer amount of ire that's been directed at the progression system and the event that they're currently running both of which are some of the worst I have seen in recent memory. I will be fair and say that all of the things you can unlock in the battle pass or the events or things like that are not gameplay affecting, they're only cosmetic items. But that said, they were making a pretty big deal about how most of their cosmetics, or at least a lot of their cosmetics, are going to be earned simply through playing the game, not by spending money on them. And if you're familiar with how previous Halo games handled that, you might think, oh, it's a return to the style we saw with older Halo games where you'd have different achievements that you could complete to unlock armor or different customization items for your armor and things like that. But no, as it turns out, they have adopted a battle pass system with this. So if you want to unlock cosmetics, you need to grind out levels in the battle pass. And the problem with that is that when you go into the battle pass to look at all the different options available, you find out almost immediately that if you're playing it free instead of spending money on the battle pass, you get maybe a handful of cosmetic items. With everything else just being XP grants towards more of the battle pass, or challenge swaps, where you can swap out the different weekly challenges that you get. And those challenges are going to be your primary method of earning XP towards the next level in your battle pass, because they didn't put in any sort of XP system for simply playing the game normally. They only put it in for the challenges, and then they had to patch in a 50 XP amount per match played because the fan backlash was just so heavy. That's right, when this thing initially launched, the only way you could get experience towards the next level of your battle pass was to complete challenges, whether they were daily or weekly. 
and if you complete all of the weekly challenges, you'll get some random cosmetic item, in the case that I've got going into this video, I managed to unlock a color scheme for armor that I'm never going to use, because it looks awful. Really, the only substantial unlock I've managed to get so far is from the event they're running right now, which is Fracture Tenrai, which gives you a suit of armor called Yoroi, and it looks kinda neat, it's samurai armor style. But it has basically no customization, not even color schemes. You are stuck with the default gray color scheme until eventually you manage to unlock something in the progression, which at the moment is basically non-existent, or you go into the store and you just buy stuff. You see, that's where the real problem is. They made it out like you were going to be earning a lot of stuff through just normal gameplay, and as it turns out, you still have to pay money to be able to do any of that. If you want to earn it through the Battle Pass, well, almost all of the cosmetics in the Battle Pass require you to have the Premium Pass in order to be able to unlock them. And even with the way the event is set up, the only way you can earn progress in the event is by completing event challenges, and even earning progress during the event only gets you challenge swaps and XP grants for the most part. It is pretty painfully obvious that the progression system was designed entirely around pushing the player to spend money, either by buying cosmetic items directly in the store, or by buying the premium battle pass and then grinding them out. And the prices you're going to be paying for the cosmetics directly in the store are just downright absurd. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not quite Valorant levels of money-grubbing terribleness, but they still think they can get away with some pretty high prices for not a whole lot of stuff. As such, the progression system just ends up doing way more harm than good at this point, and you end up relying exclusively on the gameplay to bring things up, only to realize that there's really not a whole lot going on there right now. Your options for choosing which modes you want to play are as follows. Do you want to play a co-op game with other players against bots? Or would you rather play PvP, in which case your options are 4v4 or 8v8? That's it. You don't get to choose which modes you want to play, you don't get to choose which maps you want to play. You just drop into the playlist and it just matchmakes something. So if the matchmaking ends up hating you and sticks you on the same map with the same mode half a dozen times in a row, well, tough shit buddy, I guess you're just gonna have to deal with it. Hell, there was a certain point during the Fracture Tenrai event where it gave me a challenge that I needed to get several kills with fusion coils in the Fiesta mode. So I go into the Fiesta playlist. And in that playlist, there was only one map where you get access to fusion coils. And what ensued was about two and a half hours of me going into that playlist and messing around with stuff, and it never putting me on that map. It would always put me on the same two or three maps over and over and over again. Eventually, I said screw this and just used a challenge swap to swap out that particular Fiesta challenge for something else, and it put it to something that was actually attainable on any of the maps, thankfully. But even after doing that, it still took another almost hour for that map to finally show up in the rotation. It was absurd. And while I know that's just something that sometimes happens when you have matchmaking systems like this, not having the ability to select which maps and modes you want to play makes it all the more frustrating. Hopefully they'll sort out issues like that in the coming weeks, because if they don't, I really can't see people sticking with this game for a particularly long time. Because having a solid gameplay loop, which is all people are really praising about the game right now, is only part of the equation, and it's certainly an important part of the equation, but think about how many games out there have solid gameplay loops, but the communities abandoned them because they were just so poorly managed. Whether that will be the fate of Halo Infinite remains to be seen. I really don't think it'll have the same kind of catastrophic drop-off that some other games have had, but if they don't sort out those playlists, the amount of content, and the progression system in particular, then I can see a pretty significant significant portion of the player base dropping off, and that gradually causing problems in the long run. And while admittedly I am not a fan of the Halo series, and I've never particularly cared for its style of gameplay, so I am slightly biased in this regard, after having played the beta for a bit over 10 hours, I'm really not all that enthused about going back for more. I'll certainly take a look at the campaign eventually and do a full review on the game, and at that point I will also take another look at the multiplayer and see if they have improved things by then. 
But as it stands, I'm not especially impressed by Halo Infinite. It's got a decent enough core gameplay loop if this is your kind of thing, but other than that, it doesn't really have a whole lot going for it at the moment. Like I said, hopefully they sort that out over time, but with it being this close to the release of the campaign, I have a feeling that this is more or less what you're gonna get on campaign launch day too. We'll just have to wait and see on that. Thank you all for watching. If you like the kind of videos I make, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. All the revenue from that goes directly back into the channel. If you can't afford to or don't want to, that is perfectly fine, I understand. But the option's there if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in my videos.